Hello and welcome back to my Divinity Original Sin 2 video. This is the Polymorph tier list breakdown. And this is a little bit of a different school to rate. Typically it's more of a compliment to most of the builds out there. Um, so let's get straight into it. So this is the most number of skills that I put into the Divine Tree. And I don't really think there's too much discussion uh, to be had um, because their strength speaks for themselves. Uh, we have Skin Graft here that completely resets all cooldowns and skills, which can be utilized in a a humongous number of ways. Not only that, it can remove Necrofire and a few other ailments as well. Free and Polymorph, one source point, one AP is relatively small price to pay for something so great. And here we have Apotheosis. It is the backbone to a number of huge combinations in the game. It unlocks a lot of those combinations and skills to be used because without it it's not a build. On top of that it also gives a nice stab boost uh, as, long as, uh, as well as a crit boost as well. And alongside it I have put Chameleon Cloak 1 AP cost, 1 polymorph required, very 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 safe skill, can be used with any build, potentially is game breaking on the cheese side where you can use it to abuse, uh, gained AP on turns whilst the enemy does absolutely zero. Extremely flexible. Um, can use a number of skills whilst in stealth. Some other skills do gain damage bonus whilst in stealth as well. So it has so many uses, can be used in so many ways, and is an extremely safe and necessary skill to have. On any build, pretty much. In the legendary column, we have Bullhorn, as you can see. I highly rate this skill because it has a lot going for it. Now, in terms of damage, it might be a little bit lower than the typical 2 AP skill. However, what it does trade for that damage, it does offer a bleed on targets. It's great for mobility, has AoE potential, reposition potential as well. Uh, if you cast bull horns and have bull rush, you cannot then be silenced, so you can still use it also. And it's not a weapon skill per se, you could use this with wands and still make pretty good use of it. In the epic column, we have Tentacle Lash. A very, very, very good single target damaging skill does 125% weapon damage. Downside, you need Savage Sword to leash for it to crit. The upside, it doesn't miss. Uh, it also... It also disables weapon users which is really good considering the amount of damage that it provides as well. It is also a short range attack but it is a ranged attack which is useful on melee builds. Now for me out of the four mobility skills that you have in the game 
spread your wings is a little bit of a difficult one to judge. I've marked it down on Phoenix Dive because if you are in most cases wanting to just jump in and do your thing, this is going to cost you two AP, one for the wings and then one to move. So in, in short term it's not as great, however long term it does have the advantage that you can fly, next turn you can fly again. So it does have that going for it, but with a good number of other skills that you may have, I don't necessarily always see that being a thing. You, there is skills such as teleport, never swap, repositioning skills like all horns or blitz attack, I mean, even the summoning pets end up having a never swap at some point as well, so there seem to be numerous ways of getting around the battlefield, and I just think that you might need one jump, but for you to need to use two points in order to move and then still need it for multiple turns after? Maybe not. Um, one really good thing about this skill is that it does provide floating, which means that if you are moving, you're not going to feel the effects of the surface, which in its own right I kind of kind of now can see an argument of putting it on the same level with say Phoenix type but not as strong as the other two so I'm actually going to edit this this is gonna stay here on the epic hmm mm, I might have to reconsider my Phoenix dive because I don't think it's that much better, but I don't think Phoenix dive is that fantastic either. Hmm. I don't know. We can leave it here for the time being. Moving on, we have Chicken Claw, which is a very good skill, very solid CC, two turn CC. Have to be in melee range though, which is a bit of an issue blocked by physical attack can be used in conjunction with rupture tendon so it does make a nice combination with that but the downside of a chicken claw it is awfully passive to AP for a CC single target I think there is better options out there but nevertheless still a very hard CC for, t for two turns so, yeah, it's a very, very solid skill. Heart of Steel. Doesn't provide protection, but it does provide a solid amount of armor over a number of turns. Ideally used pre-combat, because it does last for a long time. Can be used in conjunction with Soulmate to provide armor for a teammate as well so I do kind of like to use this with a summoner two AP is almost feels kind of expensive but I suppose if you take into considering the amount of armor that it will restore over the number of turns it's pretty good value it's a low investment of two polymorph, so it's quite easy to gain. So, again, this is a skill you could quite easily consider using. And then we have spider legs. Spider legs at times can be a little bit of an awkward spell to use. It's certainly not as flexible or as usable as something like Worm Tremor. However, it doesn't need a talent to function as Imwebbed just goes through everything. 
it does provide haste for the user when they move over the unwebbed. However, the downside is that it can inweb your own teammates, so positioning is key whilst using this. A severe weakness with this skill is that it's very, very, very vulnerable to fire. It only unwebs them for one turn. And also, it's awfully expensive to use uh, 2 AP for one turn of soft CC and then it's on cooldown then you can use the turn after again for another 2 AP so AP I'm not so sure it's that efficient but nevertheless it is a viable skill The only sort of downside with this is that it doesn't work in conjunction with spread your wings. Um, I think, in my in my opinion, it's a skill that uh, is viable, but you have to really utilize it well in order to make it justifiable when using. And then we have Medusa's head. Now this is a very very interesting skill. Um, first and foremost it's really good with geomancy builds uh, because the skill itself gives one plus in geomancer. It does offer 50% earth resistance as well. The CC is extremely strong. However, the downsides are it's like extremely AP heavy in using this skill. Does not work with bullhorns. And the petrifying range is relatively short, so you typically have to stay rather close to your enemies whilst it's in engaging them. Not you will not see this on every build. Um, it does scale with strength, I believe. Like I said, uh, the the downside with petrifying enemies is <coughs> if you're a if you're a you know, geomancer, earth focused party, poison focused party, it's not an issue because you get in the resistance advantage, correct? Whereas if you're kind of pa uh, making it work with fire, petrifying removes the, f the burning, the uh, fire resistance as well, so you'd really have to sort of consider how you're using the skill and how it meshes with your party setup. And in the uncolum, uncommon column rabbit. We have flay skin. Now it's it's extremely powerful skill. Uh, in, in the nullifying of resistances, um, but you can only really use this whilst the magic armor is stripped, so typically you're using it just to kill the enemies quicker rather than it really assisting you stripping the armor down. So I don't value it that highly. It scales with strength, so typically you would be using this with a, a mixed party perhaps the strength user using it to assist. It only destroys magic armor. You could say use with this battle mages, but again, I personally don't think it's worth using with such a build or at all because 
it's there purely just to nullify the resistances and the damage is uh, negligible to say the least, it's not super good. I would put points elsewhere and I would put memory elsewhere. But again, that's just me. And then we have Terrain Transmutation. This is quite a cute skill. Um, I would not be surprised to see this on a lot of mages because it can give you elemental affinity uh, quite easily when the battle is uh, kicked off. Um, it only costs one AP to use. Um, and also you may use this to to remove troubling surfaces in your vicinity. Um, so yeah, this this skill would be used by mages typically uh, just to gain out of elemental affinity, or more than likely. Um, I would say, depending on your setup, it's a take it or leave it skill. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't say it was mandatory. But at the same time, I certainly wouldn't say it was a waste of space either. And here we have Forced Exchange. Now, for me, it's a little bit cheesy for my liking. Exchanging Vitality percentage with the target. Now, in a way, I suppose this game, this skill is extremely game-breaking if you're setting up for it. You know, you can always go into a fight with 1 HP with this skill ready to use and then just use it against every single enemy. Just strip down the physical armor and switch to vitality. Uh, but to be honest I think if you've already got to the point where you can strip their physical armor down you can CC them to death anyway. So, for you to just do this, it almost, it almost makes me feel the skill is kind of redundant. <clears throat> I mean, you can you can completely play around the skill. Get the, you know, you can always strip the armor down in, in however way you you see fit. You can always cast a thing on the edge like this says. Do the switcheroo. And you're back to full HP, they are at 1 HP, and then it's a simple kill. But, but like I said, once the armor's down, CC them to death, not an issue. So I think the investment's quite big for something that you can just work around. You don't need to invest so heavily into this, I don't think so. Personally, not really, not really a skill I'd bother with. I kind of don't like skills like this, but it works, but for me, I just wouldn't bother with it, to be honest, and I'm going to keep it here. Maybe I'm a little bit, bit biased against this, but we all have different tastes, I suppose. And then we're here. I believe it's called Equalize, Vitality, and Armor Percentages. I would say this is particularly situational skill. Kind of usable, I suppose, when you're not able to heal reliably, but I mean... Again, how many situations are you going to be in where you, you can't really do that? Um, it's just a very weird skill uh, to use optimally. Almost feels like uh, it's ex so extreme in terms of the situations where you're going to use it. I, 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 for two AP, I personally would just avoid this at the plague. It's just I mean, let's just read here. Again, it's a very specific, cheesy kind of build, unstable build. You're going to be using this, maybe. Sure. We'll 
someone here saying it doesn't work properly when targets are shackled. I'm not really sure. This is quite a funny comment. Because if you look at them, it just looks like a bunch of people just putting their arms around each other. That's pretty awesome. So here it is. I mean, the skill is bad and pointless, but a lot of people disagree. So, maybe there's various unique uses that I'm not seeing. I personally would just avoid this. I think there's just other things, better things to do. So for that reason, I'm putting these skills here because there's probably a a really good way to use them, just not my kind of playstyle. So there it is. There is my polymorph tier listing. Here. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Disagree? Agree? Feel free to let me know. Nevertheless, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.